that I'm going to tell you about is that God decides that when he's going to bless me, he's going to move, he'll use something weak, something despised to bring him glory. He don't choose those things that would bring the thing glory. He chooses weak things so that he can get the glory. And I want to let you know, all of you all who are serving God, one thing you got to know about God is that he is not predictable. Amen. You cannot predict what God is going to do. And when serving God, is it's good, saints of God, to just throw away or abandon all preconceived notions as to how God is going to deliver you. Because God will deliver you in strange ways. He will deliver you in unusual ways. Am I right about it? You cannot say that God acts this way nine out of ten times. Or if you pray a certain way, God will do it that way all the time. Because God marches to his own drumbeat. Nobody's telling him what to do. In fact, Ephesians 1 and 11 says, he orders all things after the counsel of his own will. When he decides to do something, how many know he don't call a committee? I wish I had some help. He, he, won't, he won't ask you, he won't even ask you what you think that he's getting ready to do. He'll just do it because he's God. <laughs> and how many know he got a plan for your life? that sometimes leave even you baffled. Yeah, that's the thing about God. He, he, he baffles unbelievers. He baffles them. They, when, when God does something, he will baffle them. They don't understand what in the world is God doing. But not only, Brother Mike, does he baffle unbelievers, he'll baffle believers. Amen. That believers don't even always understand what he is doing. But here's what I want to talk to you about today, that God got all kinds of ways to deliver you. Amen. He's got all kinds. Tell somebody, he got all kinds of ways to deliver you. He's got all kinds of ways to bring you out. And I'm going to talk about today God's unusual ways. God's unusual ways. When he blesses you, he blesses you in an unusual way. And no matter what you're going through, I want you to keep in mind 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And that is God is faithful. Everybody say God is faithful. Will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will with that temptation make a way of escape. Somebody say he'll make a way for you. Come on, let's pray. Father, I need you to use me today. I need you to anoint me. Speak through me to your people. Somebody needs this word today. You spoke to me, God. I know you did. Now, God, give it to them like you gave it to me. Lord, send the anointing that makes preaching easy today. Don't let me say anything that will be for my glory, but when it's all over, you get glory. It would be all right if you save somebody today. God, if you deliver somebody, if you heal somebody. Somebody came by accident or so they think, but it's not by accident. They are here by divine appointment. Everyone that's here is here by divine appointment to hear your word. Speak through me to your people. Encourage them, God. And when it's all over, get the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, somebody give God praise as we preach. Can I preach this morning? I feel preaching, God. I hope I can preach it like you gave it to me. One thing that you got to understand when you're serving God, and this is critical because if you don't, you'll, you'll get really confused, and that is sometimes he allows things to come in your life in order to prove a specific character that he possesses. He will allow things to come into your life, and you will not even understand it, but that thing is coming to show you that another part of God that you didn't know about. And, and sometimes, I know some of y'all think God ain't moving quick enough. Some of y'all think God need to speed up because y'all been praying for a long time, waiting for an answer. God hasn't answered yet and, and seems like things are getting worse instead of better. But can I suggest to you, he's on his own time schedule. Yeah. And he's never late, but he always shows up on time, yeah. at the right time. Amen. I was just thinking about this when, when God gave it to me. Yeah. The, the fact that 
when, 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 when they sent the message to Jesus in St. John 11 about Lazarus being dead, the Lord was in no hurry. Am I right? That's right. In fact, when he got the message, it was the same day he got the message, the Lord said, he told the messenger, go back and tell them that this sickness is not unto death. And somebody said, well, but Lazarus died. And Jesus knew, because when Jesus got the word, in, in, in my mind, like, he didn't say this in the text, but in my mind, I can hear him say, good, let him die. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because I'm going to show them something about me yeah. Yeah. that they didn't know. <laughs> and, and this was the perfect situation, the perfect time to show them another part of him that they didn't know. So when he got the word, he said, good, but this thing is not unto death. In other words, it ain't going to end in death. He might die, but it ain't going to end in death because I'm going to get some glory out of this thing. Ooh, I'm talking to encourage somebody here in SOE today. Something looks dead in your life, but can I suggest God going to get some glory out of it? It's in these times when, in the waiting period, when God ain't answering when you think he ought to answer, that you got to learn how to trust him. You got to learn how to say, God, I know you're moving on your own time schedule. And, and let me ask a question. What's a good reason to trust God? You can look back over your life. And how many know God's track record is good with you? Can I get a witness in here? God ain't never let you down. Ooh, I need, about, I need about three witnesses that have let me know. God ain't never let me down. But let's be honest. Have you let him down? How many times have you let him down? And the Bible says when you let him down, he still remains faithful. You don't pray like you should. You don't read your word like you should. Yet he wakes you up every morning. Gives you your health and strength. And let's all be honest, y'all. This is why God is so unusual. Because if you wouldn't be honest, you would have to agree with me that he blesses you more than you deserve. Ooh, I like this some honest folk. He blesses you more than you deserve. Y'all come on here. We don't pay God the attention that we need to pay him, and yet he blesses us more than we deserve. And here's another thing. When you think he would punish you, he still blesses you. When, he, when you think he should punish you, he still blesses you. And this, this, is, this is what makes God so unusual. When you think God ought to be punishing somebody, here he is blessing you. You remember, you remember that woman that was caught in adultery? They brought her to Jesus. You know, I often say they brought sin to grace. Amen. They should have done it. They should, if anything, they shouldn't have brought her to Jesus. And I will say this. It was good that that lady got caught. Because if she hadn't got caught, she would have kept doing what, oh, watch out now. She would have kept doing what she was doing. But since she got caught, they brought her to Jesus. If she had never got caught, they wouldn't have never brought her to Jesus. If they had never brought her to Jesus, she would have never experienced the grace of God. Some of y'all are going to be glad you got caught. <laughs> I'm going to say it like this. Some of y'all still need to get caught. Because for some reason we think we can do what we want to do and hang who we, what we want to hang with, sleep with who we want to sleep with, and like God don't care. But can I suggest to you, he is caring and his eyes is in every place. Amen, amen. Holy, evil, and the good. But it brought sin to grace, but I often say what sin abounded, grace did more about. They thought Jesus was going to kill her. And Jesus was so cool, he just rolled on the ground and said, he was not sin, cast the first stone. Amen. And they began to walk away, and he, you know, when he looked up, he asked her, where are your accusers? She said, I have none. Jesus said, go your way, neither do I condemn you. But he said, go your way and do what? In other words, God does not give you a license to sin when he bless you. He gives you a license to live right at Oh, God. He, he works in unusual ways. 